Hi, my name is Alexandra and I'm a bibliophile. Welcome back to A Lovely Jaunt where we read better, not more. Today I wanted to sit down and just share a couple of informal thoughts on some YA books that I've been reading and sort of a trend that I noticed um, on narration style and why I think it's kind of a flaw and a mistake to maybe sometimes choose this first person narrator that we see a lot. But before we jump into that topic of conversation, this is the first video that I filmed since obviously we've started to have some race riots, some peaceful protests all surrounding the tragic deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. And I have taken some time to more fully explore my thoughts and put forward some, I think some good ideas about what we're seeing happening in our society on my medium platform, which is where I write blogs about really any topic, not necessarily about books. I don't really push it here because it's not necessarily literature focused, though of course my love of literature does come up. So if you find my perspective worth listening to, you can hear more of what my thoughts are there. Now for an awkward translation, tra translation, tra well that'll do it. Now for an awkward transition to some YA that I've been reading. So, as you guys may know, one my favorite podcast on literature stuff is uh, the Currently Reading Podcast. For some reason, I just like really like their dynamic. I don't read a lot of the same books that they do, but I just listen, love listening to them talk about books. So I am a first thing Monday morning when their new episode comes out. It's the first podcast episode that I'm listening to. But anyway, one of the books that was recommended was a YA book called American Royals. It's kind of like this teen romance, fun, angsty situation. And the concept of the book is like, what if George Washington, instead of after his second term, you know, he was asked to continue to be the president sort of indefinitely. And what if he had sort of chosen to do that route instead of he sort of like stepped down and said like, no, two terms are enough. We fought against monarchy for a reason. I'm not a monarch. I'm just a, a president. Um, and what would happen if we had sort of a system of royalty in America rather than our democratic republic that we currently have? And so the introduction basically is a couple of pages that talks about this. It's, you know, first person narration from the teenage female main character who's a princess in this family sort of talking about this George Washington alternate history as the book imagines it. And so on one of the lines that she has in there, she's sort of like wrapping up this education or this sort of like introduction, introductory chapter is like, you know, basically George Washington became the first monarch of the United States. Oh my goodness. What if he hadn't accepted and had been, you know, started something like a democracy, <laughs> you know? And so of course you're supposed to at that point be like, oh cool, it's this alternate history. Like I understand I'm grasping what's going on here. I just really have a problem with it <laughs> because I don't think it's believable that the teenage character who, and not really a teenage character, that any character would have defined American monarchy over and against, like what if it had been American democracy instead? Because the democratic system of government really hadn't been on the face of the planet since ancient Greece. It was an idea that was certainly talked about through enlightenment thinkers who were obviously very popular at the time when the American Revolution was happening and our constitution was written, which is why it was influential. But like, had America never become a democracy, I find it highly, highly unlikely that any democracies would have arisen on this planet. It was really, you know, the French Revolution then would probably have not happened the way that it did. You probably wouldn't have the democratic monarchy that we see in England and blah, blah, blah. So it's just really unbelievable that this obscure form of government that now doesn't exist in this world in the American incarnation would have been the counterexample that this character brought up. And I think, you know, there's reason why the author wrote it that way. And it, the reason is, is that it makes it easier for the reader to understand what's happening. And I just really don't like that. I, I don't like it when your author sacrifices legitimate character development or legitimate character writing in order to make it easier for the audience to understand. I think it's a mistake every time. I think it's okay to leave your audience kind of maybe needing to go like, oh, what is happening here? It's okay not to explain everything very explicitly. 
And it's way, way better of a choice to maintain that character consistency and that realism and that character development rather than making it just easier for the reader. This was enough to be a deal breaker for me, so I didn't read the book after, I didn't even read chapter one. I didn't read it past that point. I was just like, okay, not for me, which is fine. Like it's just, you know, a novel that I was picking up to be entertained and to enjoy. And that just narration style, you know, or that narration choice for me was like, not not gonna play this game at all not interested and i know that's like really a snap judgment and maybe a small thing to choose not to continue reading a book over i'm sure it was fun and delightful and i would have gotten the fun romance plot that i was looking for had i continued reading it but that it's me i <laughs> i like it i'm highly judgmental of my literature and of my movies there have been times actually this has happened to me before with like my Netflix account where I um, started watching this movie because like the little tile or whatever looked interesting and the little description sounded interesting. So I clicked on it and I watched it and I didn't get past the opening credits because I didn't like the font that they chose. So I get that I'm being highly, highly critical here and <laughs> just ridiculous. And in fact, like I had totally forgotten that I started this movie <laughs> And like a year later, that tile popped up again and I had the same exact reaction to it of like, oh, this tile looks interesting. And oh, this like description sounds interesting. And I clicked on it. And of course, like Netflix brought it back up at like the two minute, 30 second mark where I stopped reading it and I saw the font again. And I was like, oh yeah, I did click out of this movie and like clicked out of it again. So, <laughs> which of course, like I was exposed to it for such a brief amount of time that's why I like forgot that I tried to watch it so I reckon all of that to say I'm not justifying myself I'm making fun of myself all of that to say that I recognize that I'm a ridiculous human being and highly highly critical of the type of media that I consume so it's me it's not the book but I just wanted to bring that up as an example of something that I do see happening a lot in young adult literature which chooses a first-person narrator. And I think writing in a first-person narrator is actually really hard. I think if they chose to do third-person close, they would circumvent this issue where you get that still, that insight and that close sort of examination of character um, that a first-person narration gives. And even like the closing in of the perspective, I've talked about this a lot before, that it's very useful sometimes to write a book from only one person's perspective so that you, the author can withhold certain pieces of information and the reader figures things out at the same time the character does. Harry Potter does this really well. So there's reasons to use like a first-person narration in order to control the information and the way in which it's disseminated to the audience. But when that first-person narration then becomes too narrow, instead of switching and sort of saying like, oh, I'm gonna make an editorial choice and go third, rewrite this as third-person close so that I can't bring in the information that I need to, i.e. talking about democracy, even though my character probably wouldn't really phrase it in those terms or phrase that contrast together, you know, anyway. So those, so, oh, and then I wanted to talk about another book. So I read um, maybe about a third of a book called Fairest. Um, and it's by Gail, Gail Carson Levine, um, who also wrote uh, uh, Ella Enchanted, which got turned into a movie. And when I was a kid, I absolutely loved the, uh, that book, Ella Enchanted. I had it, I re reread it like probably 20 times. I actually got it to the point where like a huge chunk of the book like fell out of its binding and the glue like came off. Like I absolutely loved this book. I was kind of disappointed in the movie ver and rendition of it because I thought it was like a lot sillier and goofier than the novel itself was and that you know I love my fantasy and I love my dark fantasy and I love how mysterious and magical it was and so it just didn't capture my imagination of it but anyway I loved the book so then I was just flipping through Libby looking for something fun to read and I saw Gail Carson Levine recognized the name right away and saw that she had done a retelling I'm assuming this is like a, a Snow White retelling because it's called Fairest um, and so the main character, basically the scenario here is that she's very unattractive. She's kind of from this like working class family that's doing pretty well. And through circumstances and things in the novel, she ends up developing this friendship with the newly coronated, recently married queen, um, who is this young woman who's just absolutely beautiful. And so the 
world building or what's sort of essential to this sort of fantasy world is that singing is a huge component of their society. Actually, that's irrelevant to my discussion, but one of the things that we see throughout this novel that relates to the way in which first person narration is used in a way that I think is just like not skillful as a writer is that this character also, as she's developing this friendship, the narrator will tell us that again, first person narration, this character is observing certain traits in this queen that maybe points to the fact that she's not sincerely nice, that she maybe is using this character, that ideas of like, oh, when the queen smiled, it didn't reach her eyes. And again, this character is like, explicitly noticing this. It's in her thoughts. It's in this character's narration. It's not unconscious. It's like consciously written. She's noticing a couple other things about the queen that she does that are not very nice. And yet this character isn't putting two and two together that maybe this queen is not a trustworthy character. Now I get it again. It's that the author is being constrained by this first person narration where they want the audience to pick up on certain clues, but they don't want their character to pick up on it. But you can't use first person narration to do that because the only information we get is what the first person narrator that character is consciously thinking. And this is again another great example where third person close would circumvent this issue. And again, I hate to go back to Harry Potter. It's a really good example of it. Harry Potter sort of trying to solve these mysteries at Hogwarts and being witnesses to certain things that happen. They allow the reader to see certain clues, but we also see the way in which maybe Harry Potter misinterprets them. Oh, Snape is glaring at me and my scar hurts, but it turns out, Quarrel was right there, and so that's why it, my scar hurt. So I was actually looking at the face of Snape through the, through the back of the turban, and he didn't realize it yet. But by doing third person close, we can kind of circumvent these situations where the author is compelled to get put information into the voice of a character who should not know it. That's really the problem. So, anyway, random video for me random discussion on some misuse of first-person narration and why you should maybe consider a third-person narrator for your novel. I think it's uh, underused and is a really great tool. Uh, let me know <laughs> if you have any questions. I'm concerned that I didn't explain myself very well. Um, so let me know in the comments section if I made any sense whatsoever. And uh, love and blessings to all of you. I hope you're all doing well, staying safe, um, but until next time, my name is Alexandra, and I'm a bibliophile. And I'm still a bibliophile. I'm off my game, guys. That's okay. <laughs>